Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, normally at the weekends I take a look at the diabolical Sudoku from the Daily Telegraph. Um, I confess I did um, record my soul with it this week, um, but there really wasn't very much that was interesting about it. There were a few um, hidden singles to find and one very small chain. Um, and that was, uh, if you found those, you were done. So uh, please leave feedback. If you would like to see the solve, I'm very happy to post it and I'll do that uh, later on. Um, but otherwise I thought what we might do is return to these nickly.com puzzles, um, these historic, uh, well these have been voted the greatest Sudoku puzzles from the site over the years. I think this puzzle appeared back in 2011. And given nickly.com is closing down, these puzzles will cease to be available to us all um, very soon. And that is a great, uh, it's a tragedy. Um, but it gives me the opportunity, I suppose, to revisit some of the uh, beautiful logic that can be found in these hand-created puzzles and talk you through some of the, uh, the techniques necessary to solve them. Now, I've chosen this puzzle um, because it, uh, A, it was voted one of the hardest puzzles ever on Nickley.com, um, uh, and B, it doesn't really lend itself terribly well to the pencil mark method of notation that we advocate. So those of you who are who've been following the channel will know that the basic method we recommend is that, for example, if we look at this nonet here, we can see we've got a one here and a one here. So a one can go in either of these two positions. And what we like to see is you pencil mark the ones in like that, and you proceed and you do that as many times as you can and you can find lots of little bits of logic that you can uh, extract from these pencil marks that help you to a solution. But this is not sort of uh, a panacea. It doesn't completely solve all Sudoku puzzles. And the harder the Sudoku puzzle is, the, the more this method tends to come a cropper. And nickly.com, and this puzzle in particular, it, it will get you so far, but you have to have the, I suppose, the mental flexibility to spot some other things too. And that's what I want to talk about, a couple of things in this solve that are interesting. Um, so without further ado, how to do it. Now, one thing I would really recommend, um, especially with these, these wonderful old puzzles, is if you do pause the video now, maybe note down the puzzle, have a go at it yourself, and you'll feel, I think, how difficult this puzzle is. Um, it really is quite difficult to make um, efficient progress on it, let's, let's put it like that. Um, and I'll show you why. Um, so what can we do at the start? Well, I suppose the starting thing to note is the effect of fives and nines on this top nonet. Now this, this piece of logic here would, would be spotted with pencil mark notation, because you can see where can a five go? Well, only in one or two positions, so you'd be able to notate the fives like that. And you do the same thing with the nines, and you would identify this pair, this five nine pair in the top three by three block. And that, that's important. It's important to spot this. You can see that that might give us a number, I think. Um, what's it going to allow us to find here? Four, where can we now place a four in column five? Because of this four here, the pencil mark falls like that, therefore there would have to be a four down here. Give us a four also in that position, look. Um, so that's the first, I suppose, that the start of the solve. You can see we can pencil mark some ones there. Um, but the next piece of logic that's, you're, I think, important in terms of well, I suppose actually we can unwind the 5, 9, can't we? Because of this 5 here, we know that there must be a 5 now in one of these three cells of column 4. Um, so that means this can't be a 5. This will have to be a 9. This will have to be a 5. Um, and that would allow us to make some pencil mark 5s over there, look. And some pencil mark some 9s up here. Let's do that for the sake of good order. And now we know that the numbers... 3, 6, and 9 are appearing in these central cells here. But the next thing we need to spot is very hard to do using pencil marks. So it's one of these um, 
situations where rather than focusing on rows and columns where you have a lot of given digits, which is very much the natural way to solve, we need to actually focus on rows and columns where we don't have many given digits, but where the open cells in those rows and columns are sort of dramatically affected by other numbers that are appearing in the three by threes. So I'm looking in particular here at column six. If we look at column six, you can see we've, we've placed very few numbers in column six. We've, there's a five and a nine given, and we've identified pencil mark ones here. But if we look at this eight and this seven, although these aren't appearing in column six, this eight and the seven in the nonet are having a very direct effect on these three cells. The, none of these three cells can be an eight or a seven. So this, this column is more restricted than it might at first appear. And then if we look at the sevens and eights that are dotted around the grid, we see a seven and an eight here. So there can't be a seven and an eight in this position and a seven and an eight here. So there can't be a seven and eight in this position either. So in fact, if we ask ourselves where a seven and an eight can go in column six, I think this cell can take a seven or an eight and this cell can take a seven and an eight. So only in one of two positions can you find a seven and an eight. Now, unfortunately, the pencil mark method we recommend, that won't help you to spot these, you know, because what we're not saying here is that a seven can only go in exactly two positions in this three by three nonet. It requires us to think a bit more outside the box, to think laterally, to, to appreciate the effect of some of these numbers on open positions. And I, I fully accept that it's, uh, uh, it's not easy to see such things. But if you did manage to spot this, how would it allow you to make progress? Well, we've just seen that this 8-7 pair interferes with the one pencil mark that we had in this cell. So one can only go now in this position. Uh, I can't see where we can place ones along there now. So the next thing we would need to note, I think, it's possibly the last thing I want to mention. I'd recommend that people focus on this, this nonet here. Can you spot anything interesting about this nonet? And as a hint, we can pencil mark sixes there, look. So take a look at that nonet and ask yourselves whether there's anything more about that that we should be noticing. Again, pause the video if you need to. I think the thing that I'd be, we need to focus on is the fours and the eights. Because the fours and the eight, we've got this four and eight here, so we can't have any fours and eights in the these three positions. But we also have a four and an eight here, so we can't have a four and an eight here either. Now, ordinarily, that wouldn't be enough because that's not enough for us to pencil mark fours and eights into this three by three block because there's actually three positions where a four and an eight can go. I'll pencil mark them in just to show you. The four and an eight can go in three different positions. That would not be, we would not pick this up normally. But what we needed to do is to have the mental I suppose flexibility to appreciate that combined with this six, these two sixes here and the fact a six could only go in one of these three positions, what we in effect ended up with was a hidden triple. We're able to say there are now three numbers in this non-F that can only go in exactly three positions and therefore we know that these numbers must take up these three positions in some combination. And let's see, one immediate effect of that would be on the ones. Now, there can't be a one here, there can't be a one here. The one would have to go, oops, <laughs> the one would have to go there. Um, and the solve could proceed from, uh, from this point forward. So I suppose um, what I wanted to do, A, was to study this wonderful puzzle. Uh, I'll leave it as an exercise to the viewer to, to finish it off. Um, but B, to show you that sometimes, um, even though the method we recommend has a lot to, to recommend it, uh, it won't be enough. We need to think outside the box or a bit more cleverly with the boxes that we're given in order to make progress. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy 
uh, the content on the channel, please do subscribe. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you again soon for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.